On high performing cultures, that's the subject of today's um, session. And what does good look like? So could you answer that question? Yeah, it's a difficult one. When I've been thinking about this, um, I never actually thought I'd be talking about high performing cultures, to be quite honest with you. Most of the time it felt like the whole world was against us. And we were actually paddling like mad underneath just to keep afloat. Um, so for me, you know, what we did was we, we, we used an organisational model and, and we doubled in the space of about five or six years our, our PBT, PBT. So that for me was a high performing culture because we, took, we, we were focused on the bottom line. How we did it is a much longer story. Okay, well, just eking a little bit out of that, was what, what, what sort of challenges did you face in putting in place such a, well, such a successful high-performing culture? Ch challenges were, were from everywhere. We had challenges. We were in the middle of a, of a very sophisticated supply chain, so we had, we had challenges from our suppliers, we had challenges from our customers, we had challenges from the government, and we had challenges from our parent company, and we also had a huge competitive. So when I say the whole world was against us, that's why I say the whole world was against us. And that's why I think to get the performance we did with all those, uh, with all those challenges, you might say we, we had a high-performing culture. I, I'm, I'm not sure I, would, I should say that. <laughs> and as, as an HR leader, what, what kind of skills and traits do you need to have to be successful in that? I mean, that's a pretty complex, quite a um, large um, technical environment that you're in. So what sort of traits does an HR leader need to have to see it through? The, the, the two that, that spring to mind straight away when, when you say that are persistence and flexibility, yeah. which, which seems strange. Persistence in, this, in the sense of you've got all these challenges and at some point you think to yourself, God, I just want to give up and, and go home. Um, so you have to be persistent. You have to be persistent if you've got a course of action, be persistent in that course of action. And we had a, an organisational model which we used and we had to be persistent in the way we used that. But I think also flexible in the sense of you know, if something's not working, then do something else. So many people put something in and, and, and think they have to keep doing it. We, we were flexible at the times we needed to be. And I, I think that for me, they were the, they were the two skills. John Richards, thank you very much. Thank you.